Hello, everybody. This is Board Game Chats. I'm Myron. And I'm Chris. Hello, Myron. How are you today? How are you doing? Good, man. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Literally and figuratively. Cool. Cool. So <laughs> that is actually what the weather is like today. It's kind of cool. It's, it's not It's not hot. It's not cold. It's It's kind of cool. It's nice. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's normal. It feels more normal than like the previous, you know, in days scenario that you know they filmed in the movies <laughs> in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, not not nearly <laughs> as much sweating and changing of shirts to to feel refreshed. Uh, so today we have uh, an exciting hmm. guest. Andy Kim is he is a, a game designer in Toronto. Uh, Andy, welcome. Thank you. Well, um, thank you for having me. Hey. We are happy to have you on I the show. Saying, hey, we want to... Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we're happy to have you on the show. Thanks for agreeing to be on. We uh, wanted to uh, get to know you a little bit, find out about your board game journey, how you became a board game designer. And um, why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh, uh, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, as a board gamer, I've been pretty much... Uh, I'd say gaming all my life, but like, you know, we started off with like sort of your um, basic uh, Walmart. Well, actually, not Walmart. I didn't have Walmart back when I was a kid, but like, you know, the stuff you'd get at Kmart and Zellers and stuff, but like, you know, your monopolies and risk and mm. things like that. But um, but it's basically what happened at some point. Uh, I got engaged to my wife, uh, my now, now wife, and um, she introduced me to a couple of her friends and one of them introduced me to this little game called Catan which I'd never oh. heard of before and so when I played that I was like okay sure I'll try I like board games and when I tried that I was like this is not just a board game what is this I've never heard of this before I had so <laughs> much fun I couldn't believe how much fun I had and Catan. I basically told yeah <laughs> I was gonna say Catan it's not a yes. it's not a board game it's a lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I I told I told everybody. I, knew. I told my wife. I told everybody. I said I want this game. This is the thing I want next. I want I want this Catan. And funny enough, my uh, sister in law says I got the game that you wanted, and she hands me a gift for my birthday, and it was not Catan. <laughs> 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 it was this other game. I was like, oh, was but it? I wanted Catan, and you gave me Carcassonne. Carcassonne, oh. and then so I'm looking at this game, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna trade this in for Catan." But I'm looking at the back of the box, and I'm reading, it and I'm like, "This sounds kind of interesting too. Maybe I should try it. Maybe I won't, I won't trade it in." So my wife and I tried it, and I was like, "This is amazing too." So basically, that just started this whole snowball effect. Um, like I'm just like, "Oh wow, this is, this is amazing." So someone introduced me to Dominion. And then I tried Bang, so I tried my first social deduction game, and like it just went on and on from there. And now, years later, <laughs> I like I have a huge collection of games, and uh, um, yeah, I'm just having so much fun discovering new games. How how many games do you have in your collection? I if the BGG stats are correct, I think it it says I have 231. Um, I haven't bothered checking it physically, but um, that's. I believe that's one of that now. Nice. <laughs> See, that's one of the things that I need to do. I actually have to start. I have to start recording my games on BG. What did you say? BG stats? Oh, yeah, yeah. Board game geek. Yeah. So BGG. Board... Yeah. Because, like, like if you ask me that question, like, even though, even though we ask people this question like every month, Chris, mm -hmm. if you ask me yeah. that question, I'd be like, I don't know. Let me like look at my receipts. I'll, I'll be looking through email. <laughs> So like you can tell that people are like professional when they like know like the stat right <laughs> off the you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We definitely gotta get you on boardgamegeek.com. We call we refer to it as BGG, it's boardgamegeek.com. And then uh people who log their plays, which is a totally different uh situation, they use BG stats, which is an app that you can download. I think there's a small fee mm -hmm. for it through the app store. And that lets you uh, log your plays. And that's connected into your BGG account so that uh, all of that information is uploaded. And that's something I do regularly. I keep uh, keep track of my plays. Do you do that, Andy? Do yeah, you track that, your plays? I don't. I, 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 I tried starting that a little bit. Um, mainly what I, was, what I started using it for 
was uh, for my kids because uh, we got we always get uh, into little discussions like, oh, you got to pick the last game or you got to pick the last game we picked. Oh. So I started to track who picked the last game we played. And then that <laughs> way it's like, ah, well, you picked last time. So now it's my turn or it's, it's uh, my daughter's turn or whatever. <laughs> Do they that, let you that works so like well. do they let you indicate who went first in the last game? Uh, the stats do, yeah. Uh you can you can say oh, who yeah. was the first player and stuff. But we use that uh there's an app on on my phone that basically has that I'm sure some of you have seen it, the first Strazi, player. Strazi, right? Uh, it's yeah. not Strazi. I'm not sure which one I use, but it's yeah, it's similar oh, you know, to you that. Oh wow. Strazi is, is no. one that we... Mine's literally called first player. That's the app. Oh. Yeah. It's Ooh. very similar. It's very simple. I, I I have used it because my friends have had it. I just haven't downloaded that one. <laughs> yeah, I think Twazi is free, but and that it, one's it got. It depends a on the spelling. game. Like some some games come with dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look up how we spell Twazi because it's a weird spelling. C H W A Z I. For those who are interested, it's on the App Store, and ah. it is. Uh, I think it's free. I'm pretty sure that one's free, and everyone just kind of puts their finger on their phone and whatever finger highlights uh, is the first player. Um, but actually, that's a good point for us to ask for feedback from the listener. If you have a, a unique or unusual way of choosing a first player, we'd love to hear your stories. You can send us email at boardgamechats at gmail.com. Please do that. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so, uh, Andy, you mentioned that uh, your wife, I guess, is responsible for introducing you to gaming. Your wife and her friends. I, I guess her friends more than anything because like I, my wife played before too, like your uh, typical games. I think I think she discovered Catan at the same time as I did because she had never played it before either. Uh, but I oh, think we okay. both fell in love with that game. Uh, uh, right now, Catan's not in my highest ranked games anymore. Uh, as you know, as gamers, we discover more and more games, and you know, we discover better games and stuff like that. I, that's I'm not knocking Catan at all. Like uh, it's I, it has a special place in my heart as being like the first the uh, uh, designer uh, game out there that I have. But um, so that that one's staying in my collection uh, forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's amazing how many people have been turned on to modern board games through Catan. Like Catan is like the ultimate ambassador for modern board. Even now, I mean, Catan is one of the older, uh, if not the oldest modern board games. Find that. And it still is turning people into, you know, modern board gamers and teaching people that there are games that are not Monopoly and not Risk and Trouble. Uh, it's still doing a good job that way. Um, so sure. yeah. I have heard. Andy, that there's an interesting story about how you and your wife met, uh, and I'm wondering if you would mind sharing that. Oh yeah, so um, actually, uh, <laughs> so my wife and I, um, well, beforehand, like I wasn't living in Vancouver for a while, and uh, I moved into uh, moved back to Toronto. I, I I was born, raised in Ontario, but I was in Vancouver for a while. And I moved back, and so um, I go to. I'm a Christian. I go to a church, and basically, I sort of met her. Uh, she was a pianist there, and um, and I was I was basically brought on to conduct a quite I, I was brought in as a conductor, uh, and I started a youth orchestra. So I counsel youth on on Fridays Friday nights and stuff. And then my wife also is um, is a part of a, a worship team, like sort of the band at our church. And so they okay. practice Friday nights. And I, anyways, discovered that uh, yeah. So we were going to meet, uh, like you know, we're just making friendships and I just met her um that night and that was our um we sort of stayed there and I basically uh long story short we ended up uh creating a sort of quote-unquote date on Sunday night that we were going to go out and see a movie but this was in September and as you know there's no good movies out in September <laughs> so we just rented a movie went to went over to her place and let's just say we never got to the movie and just keep in mind, this was my first date with her and first date with anybody. Well, sorry, not anybody, but basically my first date with her. And long story short, I ended up asking her to marry me on my first date. So on your first um, we got date. engaged on my first date. On my first date. And she said yes. <laughs> There's more details to that story, but she said yes. She said yes. Wow. <laughs> that so, is an amazing story. Yeah. Wow, was she yes. like completely um, taken well, it's, aback? It's funny because 
Well, this is how it happened. Um, so we were talking and talking. And at some point in the night, apparently I said, and I don't remember saying this, but my wife remembers saying this. Um, she said that I said something, something for someone I'm falling in love with. I don't know what that something, something was, but someone I'm falling in love with. And I said, we should get married. And then that's when wow. my brain kicked in and said, what are you doing? <laughs> what did you just do? You just made this whole night awkward. And it's just, she's going to say no. She's never going to want to see me again and all that stuff. But then <laughs> she said, yes, we should get married. And then I said, will you marry me? And it's funny. Um, like, I, I know, like, I, I don't know how many people are believers that listen to your church, uh, to your uh, podcast and stuff. But I, I remember praying to God, like in my beliefs, I, I prayed to God and said, I'm so bad with women. God, if you're there, can you just make it so obvious that like, you know, just tell me. And I believe in my heart that God put those words in my mouth because I would have never said that in my life. Just so I think that's, uh, so that's for me, that's what happened. It just popped out because that was the that. dumbest thing you can say <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a first date, right? So, oh my God, that's an out. amazing it story. Out, so. Yeah, that must have been a heck <laughs> of a first date. Like you guys really got along, I guess. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, we did. That's we awesome. Did. Yeah, and it just and it just now, clicked. Everything's clicked. Yeah, that's that is great. Thank you for sharing that. You you guys are obviously a, a great <laughs> couple. That's a great story. You have how many kids do you have now? We have two kids. Two kids. We have two kids. An older daughter. She's she's turning ten in next week, and my son just turned eight a couple weeks ago. Very nice. That's a fun age to get them into board game stuff. I imagine that. Oh yeah. As a dad, that's a lot of what you're doing right now with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, and it's good. funny. Um, I, I know, I know you haven't asked about the designing yet, but like my my kids are already getting into design as well, and I I love no that. Way. As well. <laughs> How so? Are they just like? Well, they, they'll just come up with. Go ahead. Yeah, they'll. Um, it's funny because like we were playing, uh, we were playing Cubitos the other day. Uh, that's a new, pretty new game. If no, if you haven't played it, it's fantastic. You should play. It. It's so much fun. But I just remember my son after playing says, "I know how you can make this a cooperative game." I'm like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> and like, wow. or or like he would think of different themes. Like he's really into the Egyptian theme and stuff. So he like created this treasure finding. Um, treasure finding game and stuff and it was really really cool like you know a little card play and stuff um and i proudest designer dad thing moment is that they have never to this date created a roll and move game <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic that is a good dad right there a good designer um we uh <laughs> that's good to hear what kinds of games like we, i'll play with my niece and nephew who are seven and five now uh, so what kind of games are you playing with, with them? Well, um, we, when I started with my kids, um, we start, I started off with like a bunch of the Haba games. Uh, one of them was rabbit rally was a huge hit for my daughter, uh, mainly because she's into rabbits. Like she loves rabbits. I think she has 30 stuffed rabbits. Um, so far no wow. <laughs> they're really into squishmallows now but uh that's that's what she's into yeah and so since she was into rabbits i got like you know i got uh there was this game called rabbit island that came out and then bunny kingdoms of course um you know got them okay. into that um they're really into this game called oceanos oceanos is excellent oh, i've heard of and it. certain ones there but are bunnies in there that? No, there's no bunnies in that okay I'm not underwater bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming, swimming. But they buddies, love you know. they love Oceanos <laughs> mainly because <laughs> <laughs> they got into Oceanos because I I just did this one thing while we were playing and I um like it's a it's a card drafting game and uh, there's this portion where like in all card drafting games you give you know somebody some cards that you don't want right and I just blurted this out I just said man you guys just gave me garbage that's the one thing I said and then now it's known forever in our household as the garbage game. And it's not that it's bad. It's just game. basically, that's the game you give garbage to dad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's good because theme is so important for kids. And, you know, the idea of play and making it fun is, mm -hmm. 
you know, such a big part of what's happening with kids. And sometimes it's just the words that you say, or, you know, whenever this happens, we, we all have to snap our fingers or clap hands or give high five or whatever. That is the fun part <laughs> about being kids. Um, right. So a question that I always find interesting is, so how do you explain the kinds of games that you play to people who are new to modern board games? Uh, sorry, what was that last question? Sure. It's how, so how do you explain the types of games that you play to people who are new or have never played modern board games? Like people who aren't familiar with games like Catan. How do you explain the types of games? Oh, um, I basically tell them, well, the thing is, I would be, I would call myself what some people in the the hobby would call an omni gamer. So <clears throat> I play all sorts of games. And so it's really hard to, I, I basically say I play games that you would not normally find at a Walmart or like, you know, at the places that you would normally, I, I buy, I purchase hobby games i i usually use that term but then i introduce them i usually introduce them to the game so a lot of people um, especially if they're new to gaming i introduce them to a lot of party games and there's so many good ones that have come out lately like just one is a huge hit um i recently discovered time's up which is i, I know like a lot of people like that game. And one that just came out like a couple weeks ago, So Clover, has been brilliant. It's a brilliant little um, uh, party game. But there's other ones, like people who love Pictionary. I introduced them to uh, Fake Artist Goes to New York. Um, that's a great oh, one. Oh, yeah. But there, there's <laughs> some... I, <laughs> <laughs> but that introduces them to social deduction and and it's like, you know, oh, it's kind of like Pictionary, but there's one person who has no idea what they're drawing. Right. So it's, it's, you know, it, they see the fun in that as well. Right. You, you know, Andy, what, the funny thing is when you said on the gamer, I've been watching that. What if thing. And I immediately got like the image of you as like the watcher, like <laughs> omnipotent gamer. And so like, so like it's, it's you said like the, the question is a really great one because like, so like I really like board games, uh, mm -hmm. but like, like when y'all describe board games, y'all are like, all right, so this is a Skull and Crossbones 3-3-Z Alpha uh, <laughs> game. And, and, and like, y'all be like, all right, okay, I know exactly what that is. But, and I'm, I'm like, okay, like, okay, what what are you talking about? A card collection game? or So, like, is there, like, a resource that someone who, like, likes gaming but, like, wants to be, like, you know, like, be in on the joke, like, wink back at the camera, like, when y'all talk about the mechanics and stuff like that? <laughs> I'm... That's like, a good when we're talking with like people who don't game that much it's, it's yes. yeah that's hard i don't that's the thing like when i talk to people who don't game that much i basically start talking about i i start with the theme i basically said this game is about this like i got someone into specter ops uh pretty early yeah. because i told them it's basically hide and seek in a board game style right and you're basically right. one person sneaking around and everyone's trying to look for them but it's got like this cool like like mission impossible sci-fi type of thing or oh, you know I was are, are you saying that people that don't understand these things have have low intelligence and we should go back to describing them from like five-year-old games that you played and we have to start there i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like hide and seek but like you actually <laughs> follow the rules you don't like move your you know like your your eye you know your mask down and uh, <laughs> But but you, I think that's a really great point. You start with something that's that's easier to understand, and the, and I'm assuming that you use that to get into more complicated mechanics. I I do, and I I, I come from I I discovered a sort of uh, thing that is near to dear to my heart is teaching, and um, I sort of discovered in during university that I sort of had a knack for teaching things in general. And I, mm -hmm. what I usually, what I usually do to teach someone a complex concept or something that uh, the other person doesn't understand, I'll use something that they do. For instance, my father, I was trying to explain how to use a computer or how a computer works and to my father, but he knew, he doesn't know anything about computers, but I told him through mechanics, like a car. So I said, the engine is like the CPU. Like, so he understood computers because I related something that he understands. And that's how I approach gaming as well. Mm. I'll go from something that they understand. Like 
uh, hide and seek is a good example because everyone knows how to play hide and seek. I hope, true, <laughs> but true. you know, yeah. I, yeah. And, right. So if if I um like I was telling someone about Spirit Island, Spirit Island is one of my favorite cooperative games. But I asked them first, have you ever played Catan? And if they have, then it's great. This is the opposite of Catan. <laughs> like it's basically where the people protecting uh, the islands, uh, the, the the land that the conquerors are coming and you have to chase them off you don't want people to build cities and roads and stuff on your land you want them to get off your island right so i basically go from a place where they understand something and go from there and that's how it i find it easier to get them into the concept may not basically teaching the game but basically getting them excited for a particular game nice i like that i like that like um uh, yeah you get them you get them you hooked it by playing something like hide and seek is an amazingly fun game for people who <laughs> played it when they played. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's awesome. And, and, and what I heard in there also is like, you, you get, you, you, you interest them in the theme of it as well. All right. Well it's Catan, but like, it's completely different. And then here's what you're doing. You're this, this, mm -hmm. this, and you're trying to do that. And I, I noticed also like you go into storytelling as well. Like, Hey, look, I, this is the garbage game and blah, blah, blah. And when I heard that, I'm like, oh, I have to try that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really sure. cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I love games with theme. Um, uh, uh, but I like the, uh, like, my, my wife is a huge abstract gamer. Like, she loves abstract games. She loves her Azul's, uh, Sagrada. I, I know they have a theme, but it's, it's pretty abstracted out, right? But, uh, like right. uh, I'm into those as well. So it's a little trickier for those, but I use the theme, whatever theme that the designer had put in there, I'll use it <laughs> to teach mm -hmm. the game as much as possible. Now, Chris, um, I think I'm finally ready. What kind of gamer am I, dude? Like, I know you know, what kind of gamer uh, am I, dude? Like, you can tell I, me. You, I think you have to answer that question. I shouldn't be able to answer it for you. I shouldn't have to answer it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I would say... That's pressure. I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> I, if I was pressed to answer, All right. I would say yeah. if I had to press be pressed to answer, I would say a party gamer. I think you like like me. You like games that are an hour or less, easy to learn, uh, take a very short period of time to teach, and. Uh, if the theme is interesting and exciting, that's a plus, but not necessarily the, you know, the most important element yeah. of it. it. The most important element is that it's not, you know, four hour blow our brains up and uh, be a brain burner. Does that sound right to you? Yeah. 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 I think it's right. So I would say more like casual party. I like cooperative games. I like games. Mm -hmm. So I play games because it's a thing that I'm doing with friends. Uh, as we move forward in our journey. Like, that's the reason I play board games. Mm. And board games, and we've talked about this a lot, board games, uh, if you set them up right and you create the right atmosphere for to play a board game with friends, it's just like, it's really intimate. It's like really cool. It, 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 it's like you're building a community, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. A, a lot of surprising things happen at a board game. Like, just the fact that you get to know so much about the people who are at the table, even, even if you don't talk about yourselves or each other, you just seem to get to know that personality a little bit better than other hobbies that I've, would you agree with that, Andy? Yeah, for sure. I, I'm a huge, uh, yeah, I would totally agree with that. Um, we uh, actually, at our church, we started a uh, board gaming, uh, like a board game nights every month. And uh, like, yeah, my biggest argument is that you can get to know someone really well just through playing a game with them. Uh, and I think that's been just always like you, you play with them, you, you get to see what, you know, what they're like personality. Are they, you know, are, are they timid? Are they aggressive? Are they, you know, pretty easygoing? Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you see all that come out just, uh, just from uh, playing a game. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on that note, what about the friendships that you've made while well, you have special friends that you've made? Yeah, um, I've, uh, it's after, shortly after, like, I really got into gaming and stuff. Well, we, I've played games with several people from my church, from friends, from friends of mine. And, you know, I've been trying to get them into gaming and stuff. And so those, uh, the people sort of I've met 
we've been doing a lot more of the sort of easy family weight or general weight games and stuff. But then I ran into a, a friend of mine, um, uh, James, who was into, he was a gamer. He's a gamer. And I, I know, uh, I know Chris knows him. Um, and so basically I, I started gaming with him and I met through, met people through him and we've got now a game group going uh, in, in my area. And so we've, before pandemic, uh, we, we, we met regularly to play games and, you know, love trying out the new stuff <laughs> or, you know, would go to like some of the old things that they like, but I would, yeah, I would, I was really introdu- introduced into some like really, really heavy games uh, through them uh, because some of them really like, like the Lacerda's uh, Lacerda is known as a designer known for his super heavy games. So, you know, I don't think I would ever, own one of those games because i think they're just too hard to teach <laughs> for me um, <laughs> and they're pretty long i don't know anyone else who would play those games with me other than them so i'm like okay i'm only playing with you guys these games because there's no one i know that would play these games with me. for the listeners what's lacerda's first name again i, I can't remember at the moment uh, vital vital, vital that's lacerda. Right. and can you give us a couple examples of games that he's designed i i can't think of at the moment uh Oh, really? um, so there's Lisboa. Lisboa is a big one. Yes. The Gallerist. Um, the one I really liked was the Heist one. Oh, what was that one called? I can't remember that one. Um, anyways, there was this one where you're like you're like doing these heists and things. I I, I really liked that one. Cool. But um, most of the time, Lisboa was like really hard. I I just didn't know what to, how to play that one. I've heard that his games are are very very. Deep. I th- I think I may have played, I think he did Mercado de Lisboa, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a light version of Lisboa. And I have played that. Um, so uh, yes. Really yeah. 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 Oh, Kanban's so, another one he did. Kanban. Oh, yes. Yeah, Kanban. So. Oh, Escape Plan. Escape into... Plan's the one I was talking about. The the one I, I really liked. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know of that game. Yeah, yeah. Um. So before we get into game design, I want to ask you, and this is a question that I like hearing the answer from everyone I talked to. I guess it's it's sort of a two-part question. What have you learned um, about yourself as a gamer? And uh, how has gaming changed your life, if at all? Oh, wow. Um, I've, about myself, I, I think I've, I think I've developed and learned that, you know, I've gotten really more easygoing. I think people have known me as sort of an easygoing uh, person. And I, I found out that, I don't really care about winning that much. Like, it's not that I don't try to win when I play games, but it's one of those games, that, one of those things where I just love playing. I love interacting. I love playing with people and just seeing how the gears shift. I, I, it's, it's funny because my wife wins a lot. My wife wins a lot of ah. games. <laughs> but Dude, and, and, and she, shame. <laughs> she, yeah, we could try to call explain to me why, us, I I, why this <laughs> happens. And I think it's true because... <laughs> <laughs> but it's because she sees what i'm doing while i'm playing games is i'm exploring i ex- i'm a, i'm explored i'm like oh let me try this see what happens there oh i want to get this engine going and stuff and like she'll demolish me because she'll be you know setting up her engine really efficiently and stuff but i'm like oh this looks cool let's add this to my engine and stuff and you know by the time it, it's like oh the game's over i lost Oh well, yeah, you know. But I had fun, and so, so yeah. I don't know. I'm just having fun playing, but like, I'm not trying to lose. I'm <laughs> just, you know. Uh, and with the kids, you know, I try to go as I. I don't let them win, but I go easy on them. I I put my at I put it at like level three instead of level five. Uh, you know, and right. Uh, but yeah, my daughter has and son have both beaten me at games and stuff. So it's been. <laughs> So That's yeah, nice. I just like to explore. And uh, how have I grown as a gamer? Uh, I don't. I think more just I'm because I've gone into design. I'm I sort of see the gears working in the game now. Like I see, mm-hmm. oh, I see what this designer was trying to do. This goes here, and that gets this resource, which is going to get me points or whatever, right? Like you, we see the gears working, and so. I, I enjoy seeing that. And I, when I see a game that I like, that's usually because I like the mechanisms that's going on and how it does relate to the theme and stuff. So like Cubitos was one where I, when I saw videos for it and stuff, I didn't think I was going to like it. I just couldn't see how this would work. But after playing it, I saw, okay, 
I don't think the mechanisms are that great, but it was so much fun. It's just so much fun. I just love playing that game with the kids and we just have a blast. So sometimes it's just, sometimes you have to just throw out the mechanisms and you just play and the experience is just so enjoyable that you it doesn't make sense why I like it so much, but I just do. And then there's certain ones I'm like, oh, I just love how this plays. So yeah, yeah. it's hard to say how I've grown, but I think I've just grown to basically see how things work and stuff. So Cool. Um, well, that's a good transition. I want to ask you about your journey into game design. How did you get started designing games and what are you working on? And um, was it approved I... by your wife? That, that's... <laughs> <laughs> was it an approved I... activity? <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it, it is pretty time consuming for, to say the least. Um, I, <laughs> it's really funny. I never in my wildest dreams thought of actually becoming a game designer. That was like in the back of my head. Um, but funny story. Um, we went to the Metro Toronto Zoo. And if you've been to the zoo, you know that parking lot is humongous. It's just yeah, like it's several football fields large. And anyway, we parked somewhere. And when we were <laughs> going going home, I we had completely forgotten where we parked the car. We couldn't remember. No one remembered the le- letter that we were parked near. And so we were just wandering around. And the thought that came into my mind was not, oh no, how are we going to find our car? Or how are we going to get home? Or you know, how are we going to figure out this thing? My first thought was, I wonder if I can make a game out of this. <laughs> and so basically that's that started the design process of um, this game I created called um, Valet, where players play a valet and you're supposed to look for cars. And it was basically aimed for children. And, you know, I, we tested it out and it was fun. And so I decided, I wonder, I don't know, maybe I'll try publishing it. Maybe I'll look into what it takes to publish and through my gaming group they introduced me to several people uh some of them sen fun long i i got introduced to and um i went to our local uh local convention uh, breakout and breakout has this little booth uh from a play from an organization called proto to and at the time it was headed up by pam walls and i went to their table and i said i wonder what you guys are about and they said oh this is for for uh prototyping new games for designers i was like okay when do you guys meet and i found out it was in september so you know i went to my first first pro to i had a couple designs and you know tried them out had some publisher look at them and you know nothing happened but i was like it was fun and so that's how i started into this whole design and i've designed about five or six games now um wow all wow. of completely different styles like different types of games and stuff and now it's after so many years i'm finally getting one published which is really exciting yay that's exciting can you tell us about that one yeah right i mean (laughs) Uh, the the one that's being published right now is the spill it's being released by smirk and dagger games uh the kickstarter comes out uh tuesday at the time of this oh thank you (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome. a big freaking deal <laughs> that is a big deal so the kickstarter from smirk and dagger comes and it, out yeah it's a big deal for me i'm excited yeah, yeah. Kickstarter from smirk and dagger. um the kickstarter comes out september e- seven, september 7th so by the time your listeners are listening to this it's going to be uh well into the kickstarter um right but um yeah this journey has been crazy it's all started from an idea that I got from a drive home from a board game meetup. I was driving home and I love dice towers. I just love how they, like when I got into board gaming, like modern board gaming, I remember seeing a dice tower for the first time. And I was like, that is so cool. So I just love dice towers. And an idea popped into my head. And I just thought, what would happen if I, like, is this even possible? Could I make a dice tower that would flow in all four directions instead of just one direction? So I just I just went with the idea and I got home and I built out of cardboard and my wife could tell you the story. I must have looked like a madman just cutting up cardboard <laughs> and just putting this thing together. I put it down, threw some dice on it, and I said, it works. And I the funny thing was I threw four dice into the dice tower and it came out in all four directions. Wow. So it was like the greatest test that I could have had. And I was just so amazed. I was like, this is amazing. She's like, what's this for? I'm like, I don't know. 
I don't know what this is for. I don't know yet. <laughs> I, I want to make a game out of this. This, this. I don't know yet. And so we, we thought of different um, themes for it. I just thought, I went like your typical fantasy type of idea. Like maybe this is a portal where like monsters are coming out in four directions and you have to defend it. And then, you know, the dice represent the monsters or something like that. And, you know, in my, the back of my head, I was like, oh, this theme has been done so many times. There's so many D&D type games out there and stuff, but I couldn't think of anything. And my wife thought of, uh, well, actually, I asked my wife, what behaves like this? What happens, what behaves where something flows out in unpredictable ways? And she said, what about an oil rig that off of uh, off an old offshore rig? And I was like, that's a fantastic idea. And I just ran with that. And that thus born was born this game co- that I called Black Waves. That was the original title, Black Waves. And I brought it to the next proto TO and Kurt Covert from Smirk and Dagger took one look at it and he was just like, I want to play this game. <laughs> he just he saw the game on the table and he's like, I want to play this game. And he sat down and played it. And I and just basically said, I, I want this game. I I was just so floored. I like he just wow, said I want that's it. So cool. And I didn't know what to do. I was like, I have never gotten this far before. <laughs> I've never gotten this far. <laughs> a publisher wants my game. And so long story short, like he signed it. Um a pandemic happened, so you know, the game got delayed quite a bit. But after a lot of playtesting, I just remember telling him at the beginning I didn't want to kickstart this game because I thought I would get a heart attack. Uh, waiting through a, like watching the kickstarter go and stuff but but again i've grown and to me i'm i'm at this part i'm just really proud of how far i've come and so i want the kickstarter to succeed but if it doesn't it was an experience that i just it's been a good experience and yeah so whether it does well or bad i'm going to be happy and content with what happens and so so that's where I'm at. And so I said, yeah, let's kickstart this baby. And like, and that opened the doors for Kurt to basically say, oh, we could do this and this and this. So the, when you see the Kickstarter, you're going to see all the stuff you get with this game. And it's it's going to be amazing. Oh. I'm just, uh, and um, uh, he got to tie uh, Quantai Moria, who's like one of the best board game artists out there onto the game. I yeah. couldn't be more happier with how this game is turning out. And it's, I, I I can't wait for people to get their hands on it because I think it's gonna be so much fun for them. All right. So when is the Kickstarter dropping? Like like I'm like trying to find it right now. Like it's it sounds it, the, amazing. The seventh. The it, it's landing on the seventh. Um and I can it's kind of hard so that's to it's September basically 7th. you go to kickstarter.com slash projects slash <coughs> September seventh. So you September won't see it yet, but um, if you from... go to their kick the Kickstarter page. Sorry, it's September 7th. It's from Smirk oh. and Dagger. And the game is called The Spill. Mm-hmm. And it the is spill. a cooperative game about and you managing can probably an get oil to it because spill. You'll see it on... And if I understand yes. correctly, it made Rado's top 10 list of upcoming Kickstarters on one of his recent videos. So it's getting some it buzz. Did. Yes. That's yes, fantastic. It was, it was on... fantastic. It is getting buzz, yeah. It it sounds amazing. What I've seen of it looks amazing. I know that uh, the artist, uh, I'm not going to say his name because I will do it a horrible disservice, but he is one of the best and most popular and, and currently <laughs> hottest uh, artists in the board game world for sure. Um, and uh, that's really, really exciting. I think the theme is one that I've you know, not seen very, very much at all. Like the only thing I can think of is a game from like the early age that was about managing an oil spill. And uh, I, d- I don't know anything about the game or if it was good, but I, I know I've seen a box cover and I don't think I've seen anything else that comes close to though. That's exciting. Yeah, that box art looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, you can see, you can find it on Board Game Geek for sure. It's a, there's a, I don't know if the preview link is on there, but uh, yeah, if you go on kickstarter.com slash project slash smirk and dagger slash the dash spill uh you should be able to find it but <clears throat> cool. i'll send it to you guys so you can post it in your notes or whatever <laughs> awesome that would be great now by the time this airs um the kickstarter will be for the most part near the last few days i am at um so hopefully people listening to this yeah. will get excited by it and uh kick it over the edge if it hasn't uh, funded or kick it up a notch if it has um but um 
It sounds really exciting. I'm so happy for you, Andy. That is really exciting. The game looks great. I, I can't wait to give it a try. I, I For the theme alone, and I love the idea of the, the tower going in different directions and sort of spreading outwards. It really works with the theme. For that alone, I think I'm, I'm for sure. Yeah, it's fun. It's tense, too. It's a very tense game. <laughs> but that's part of the fun. So, um... Now, not talking about the spill particularly, but um, as a designer in general, what do you think comes first for you? You said theme is really important when you're explaining games and when you're teaching games. Do you think th- in, in terms of game design is it, oh, I want to create a game about this? Or is it, you know, what'd be really cool is if the mechanics work this way and, the you know, you play a card and then you get a cube and then you get rid of the cube. Is it mechanics or, or theme that comes from in your game? It's sometimes, um, well, like for, for this one, for the spill, the mechanic actually came first. Um, but it was really important for me to capture a theme that works with the mechanic, that really fit with the mechanic. For valet, um, valet, obviously the theme came first because I, was, I lost my car. <laughs> but uh, basically right. I tried to create mechanics that would work with the theme um so it's it's gone both ways i actually had another one where um there's one that's um still in uh, like in design uh right right now that's basically a rubik's cube i have a rubik's cube that has different symbols on it and so you mix things around and stuff so i've played with a couple different themes with that one um right now it's on a sort of a mech a robot construction theme oh. but i haven't really nailed that down there's a couple mechanics i'm still trying to work out with that one and uh, there's one that i know there's a lot of people who have seen it at different proto tos it's called a maze falls <laughs> um my <laughs> wife came up with that name uh but basically it's this it's these blocks you drop down into this well kind of like my of uh, uh connect four except the blocks have these tunnels in them and then after you've basically filled these up you drop marbles down them and they go down these tunnels and stuff so um i'm still working out certain game mechanics there's some changes i want to make and stuff but yeah so there's one that's one game it's going to be hard to publish that try to find a publisher because i have talked to a few and they've all basically said the game's great but uh, it seems a little too expensive for them to manufacture (laughs) so i'm trying to figure out how i can make it so that it might the product, yeah, might be a little less. <laughs> so, is there such a thing as creating a game that's like digital only on something like Tabletop Simulator or Tabletop Arena or something like that? Yeah, or would anyone a, uh, really want to do that? Um, Board Game Arena. Um, it was funny. I, actually, uh, funny. I worked for Board Game Arena for a couple months uh, because they're they're looking to hire a new developer and stuff. So, um, I had asked them like, could I put some of my designs? up on board game arena if i did the program and so and they said that platform is not really for that it's more for games that are published already um but uh there are tabletop simulator and the other one uh tabletopia, tabletopia i think yeah 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 tabletopia which does do that and it's it's a great platform for that uh, incidentally uh that's how we've been testing the spill online because um kurt put the spill online um it's not available for the public, but it's because, you know, we're still working through it and stuff. But again, that, you know, I'm sure eventually that might be available. Um, but yeah, no, there, there are uh, the technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the technology is there. Well, <laughs> the technology that, is there that, to uh, help us to do these designs. Uh, yeah. That, that sounds good. Um do you, what about uh, like a, a dream collaboration? If you were going to co-design a game with a, a game designer, how who would be your collaboration? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, this is where you make enemies. There are, I, I, I guess it would, de- <laughs> I think it would depend on what I'm trying to do. Like if I ever wanted to do a legacy game, I would definitely call on, is it Rob Davio who's done the, a lot of the, who, who helped with the... Yeah, uh, yeah, Rob Davio like, is kind of known as... I think it's Rob Davio. Legacy. Yeah, the legacy guy. Yeah, so like, you know, if I had ever thought of... Like, I have one noodling around, but it's one of those ones I'm scared to start on uh, because I'm just... It's just... There's just too much going on. Like, in a, in a, in a legacy game, there's just so much. I, I, I think Rob Davio is an absolute genius when it comes to... Uh, 
legacy games because just like how do you think of not only the next move but the next game you're going to play what you changed without wrecking the whole experience and stuff right so there's there's that so like if i was going to yeah. make a uh, game like that definitely I, I would love to team up with rob davio for something like that um it feels more like uh i'd, I'd love to um team up with, like one of my favorite it'd be one of my favorite designers like uh, john d claire i've been loving his stuff from mystic veil vale and um space space like yeah. that type of stuff so like you know that type of game i'd love to team up with him for that um Oh man, there's uh, Vladimir Suchi is like one of my favorite designers. Cool. Those those are good answers. Sounds like that would be a, a good learning experience too. Um, I like them, and uh, I, cool. I, you know, you can't go wrong with with any of those. Let's let's do our rapid fire question. Right? Let's uh, why don't we ask uh, a few questions, and we'll get a, sort of a one word or a couple word <laughs> answers from you, Andy, and we'll go from there. Right. Sound good, everyone? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. You're playing a game. What's your favorite <laughs> color to play? Blue. Great. Mine too. We can't play together. How many games are your own? What is a game? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Myron again. I threw one in. I'll, I'll just ask this one and, and chop it up. Is that cool? Yep. Yep. All right. So, uh, so uh, you answered this one before, but how many games do you own? Two thirty-one around. <laughs> <laughs> That's very specific. <laughs> That's awesome. What what is a game as a kid that you played that you really enjoyed that you enjoyed playing as? I played this game called Careers a lot with my brother. Oh, Probably okay. no one's heard of it, but it was a old game. <laughs> I've never played it, but I I do remember it. I remember seeing it. Uh, what board game theme do you think is <laughs> overused? I don't know if we played it right, but <laughs> Ooh. what board game theme do you think is overused? I'm just saying because I'm not a big fan, but the zombie one. I, I'm not a big fan of zombies, so. But I I sign a lot of zombie games. <laughs> cool. Uh, name a game designer that you get really excited about when you see that they've released a new game. Oh, uh, probably Vladimir Suchi. Vladimir Suchi for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite board game mechanism? Sorry. Do you have a board a favorite board game mechanism? Um. Uh. What's it called? Uh. Engine building. Hmm. Do you store your games vertically or horizontally? Vertically. And even the ones on the top. Name a game. <laughs> <laughs> what was that i said even the ones on the top of the... <laughs> your wife is swept from your brows like well we don't want to talk about that like, you know, like... <laughs> okay and generally then last i question. store them vertically i think there's a couple i've store horizontally <laughs> last question name a game that causes you the most analysis paralysis when playing who I think right now it's a game called Praga Kaput Rejni. It's hard. To, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's a it's a it's a, uh, Vladimir Suchi's latest game. It's fantastic, but yeah, I'm just. <laughs> I really want to play that though. game. That's love it. It's a game about Prague in the Czech Republic, right? Yes, yes. It looks fantastic. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> that was our rapid fire questions. Thank you for playing, um, Andy. It's been fantastic having you on as a guest thank you so much for coming on and sharing everything um before we go i want to ask you um you know if you're okay with it where can people find you online where can they reach out to you and chat with you um and maybe where can publishers find you in case they want to talk to you about some of those game designs uh yeah sure um so uh on facebook and instagram i am andy kim 088 and then on board game geek i'm andy kim 88 without the zero so generally if you can find me i'm usually andy kim 88 or andy kim 088 i mean if that's only if i can't get andy kim 88 which is only in only on facebook and instagram i believe okay well that's fantastic thank you again for being on the show yeah absolutely thank you andy thank you for having me it was it was fun Thanks for listening to Board Game Chats with Chris and Myron. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast, check out their website at boardgamechats.com, or drop them an email at boardgamechats at gmail.com. You can also find Board Game Chats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.